So hello, it's Sunday, it's sunny, it's a perfect day to show you around my history. Well, a part of my history. The start of my life, exactly. Welcome to Breda. The Diederika Meinzenstraat. That is the street I lived in for the first 10 years of my life. From the day I was born until somewhere in the sixth group of school I lived here. As you can see over there, oh, yeah, there, that's number 44. That's the home I lived in for the first 10 years of my life. Next to that, with the green, number 46, that's the house where my grandmother lived for like, well, 20 years I think. They moved in the same time we did and, well, we moved to Etteleur after 10 years and my grandmother stayed here for more years, I think 10 years more, together with my grandfather, until my grandfather died. Then she lived there for a few years all by herself. It's quite weird to be back here after, well, 20 years now. Um, yeah, of course I lived here the first 10 years of my life and the houses are still pretty much the same. Okay, there are a few things that were adjusted, but for the rest it just looks exactly the same like it, that's, it did like 10 years ago. Oh, well, 20 years ago, except for this. There's a gate to get to the back. Not pretty sure why they did it, but probably it has something to do with security or bad people living here or wrong kids doing the wrong stuff into the Zeilis. I have absolutely no idea, but I can remember 20 years ago this was just open. We can go, we could go anywhere we wanted, and we played a lot in those alleys as well. It wasn't quite a good time to live here. Um, I can I will tell you more about that later today I had practically no friends here um, the friends I had here were just friends that didn't treat me or treated me very well um, there's a reason for that but as I said I will tell you that later um, we're heading now to my school or at least this, the, the place I started with school. Uh, it was, I believe, a, a 10, 15 minute walk. It was uh, from our street, just to there. And then it's a long way to there. And then finally you come in at my school. This is also something I was really confused about as a kid. And maybe still am, uh, as you can see. I don't know if it's, if you can see it good enough on video here, but the water here is just really brownish. Looks like rust or anything. I don't know where it comes from, but it's just like not only this water, but all the other waters in the surrounded area are this brown. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look healthy or good. Gladly I, do, I never drunk it. Ew. Don't need to think about that. So I'm here at my former school, my first school I've went to. Um, this is also a school that shaped me for the person who I am now. Not in a good way though, but in a bad way, for my feeling that is. As you can see there, that door there, uh, that one, that was the main entrance. Uh, now it's called, I think Olympia or something like that. School Olympia, uh, back then it was called Hagerhorst. So a completely different name there now it's two different schools together and I believe some some other after schoolish thing as you can see here there are all sorts of uh, classrooms for children for the first and the second group uh, those groups are together and in one of those classrooms I'm not exactly sure where it was but yeah something happened to me that I never ever can forget um, I can share it with you guys I had this uh, it was the first group I was in I was around four or five years old 
and there was this this teacher she was called uh, Marian Miss Marian um, she didn't like me I didn't like her either but okay I was four years old or five so I didn't knew any better anyway she just punished me for everything I did and with everything I did it was like okay he got cut he, his, his face doesn't suit me so okay at first she just every day kicked me out of the class uh, to stand me in the hallway crying um, after that I needed to go to the to the uh, to the deputy or, or mayor or I, I'm not sure how it's called the director of the school let's say it like that uh, so I went there like a lot of times to just do my story yeah where are you why are you here yeah I don't know she just kicked me out for what reason I don't know because I really didn't know and I and I, I, I can tell you I wasn't a bad person I wasn't a bad kid not at all I know a lot of people say that but I truly wasn't a bad kid but okay uh, in a while I think a year later maybe um, she just started uh, hitting me with her hand uh, on my on my butt on my on my back on my head um, after that a couple of months she she just kicked me sometimes at the, at the butt or at my legs um, I thought I was doing something wrong didn't quite understand what I did wrong or if I did anything wrong um, and at a certain point she just put me on the table with a whole cloth around it in a circle and she said I needed to pull my pants down in front of the whole cloth which I didn't want to because well I was ashamed already of myself and yeah it, I just sorry it's just really hard for me being here again after all this so she wanted me to put me on the table wanted to put my pants down and I didn't want that to do that so she did it herself and the whole class was laughing at me yeah, that, that really shaped me for the person I'm now I mean I'm still insecure about a lot of things and it still hits me every time I think of it and every time I come here so yeah that's the story I have from this um, to be honest the rest is uh, I never went to the police with it uh, I didn't tell uh, told my parents until I was in the fourth group or anything but then it was already too late um, my parents didn't know anything or didn't thought about it or anything because um, well the teacher just said okay he was a bad cutter he was a bad paster with glue she just made all kinds of stories up to just tell my parents why I wasn't doing my best. At a certain time frame, because I didn't did what I needed to do as a kid of four or five years old, I went to another miss and there everything went great. Never had any problem with it, but okay, I didn't have any friends, I can guess you understand why because everyone knew it everyone was laughing at me and I just didn't know how to behave because I was so punished back then that I I didn't know how to make friends I didn't know how to how to react to things I didn't know how to behave myself in front of others and I kept struggling with it I'm still doing it I'm, well I still am struggling with it it's still hard for me to to create new friendships and stuff but I'm actually trying to do it a lot of you probably didn't know this it's kind of hard maybe you think okay well it's nothing I've had worse yeah obviously you can have worse but this is something for me and this shaped me for who I was I mean I was only four or five years old and it still hurts me I've went to into, ter into therapy for it and it helped for a huge part, luckily. But still I will take it with me and I will carry it with me forever. So as you can see here, 
there are two schools connected to each other. Uh, in the past there were two different schools, one with the yellow doors and one with the blue doors. This building they built uh, in between it like a few years ago to create one school out of it, out of everything. So now it's one school, the Olympia school, but in the past there were two different schools, the Hagerhorst and the I don't know what it was called. I never been there, I never went there, I never had interest in that school because I was into that school. So another place I went to school, it's quite weird to see it right there, right now. It's Now it's a Cruyff court. It's, um, well, it's, it's created by the thinker of it, uh, Johan Cruyff. He was an awesome football player. So yeah, I went to school here. Um, that other school with the blue doors, I went there for the first two years of my school, so when I was four or five, five and six, between my fourth and my sixth year, let's say it like this. And then I went for the for group three, four and five to here. There was an extra building created here because uh, that, other, that other school didn't have a lot of classrooms, so they needed to create more, so they put an extra building right here to go to school. As you can see it now, it's just no school anymore. So, quite funny, on the schoolyard, I had my first kiss. It was with a girl called Michelle. Um, well, it was, it was nothing special, but, for the, but back then it was quite awesome. I'd, as I told you earlier, I didn't have friends or anything. She was one of the only persons who, well, looked to have interest in me. Yeah. It was quite a lovely experience. But yeah, so here my school was and now it's not anymore. And then I went back to this school again with the blue doors. Uh, it was for only half a year, I guess. Um, in that other building there were groups 3, 4 and 5. In this one it was already uh, also 6, 7 and 8. So in this building all only you had 1, 2, 6, 7 and 8. So yeah, I've been in back here for like half a, half a year until we moved to Etteleur. Um, me, my father and my mother, they were still together at the time. So as you can see here, this first one was my, um, it was my classroom where I was uh, with a lot of other classmates. Yeah, after this I moved to Etteleur. I'm heading to the little shopping center now where me and my mom, or me and my grandmom, or we and my mom and my grandmom went to uh, went to go for, for groceries and stuff and bread and I can remember I also uh, got an, a sticker book from the Power Rangers, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I got stickers from there. It, it was amazing. I loved. I loved the time. Well, not that much at school or with no friends, but just with my mother and with my grandmother. I just loved that time. So yeah, it's just oh, run for it. Um, so yeah, we're. I'm on my way there. So I'm here now. Um, not the shopping center, but this was a youth center. I went to with my mom when I was a kid. Um, we did all kinds of technical stuff like technical lessons and um, create, well, things like wooden boxes for, for birds or, yeah, you name it, just a lot of things. I can't even remember what exactly because it's like too long ago. But yeah, they smashed it down and now it's some kind of a old people's house or anything. I have no clue what it exactly is. It looks great though. Now it's called the Beemd House. Then it was called the Loper. So like walking, the walker. Maybe you can see it better now. Um, the water, as I said, is brown. This is like the other side of where I was and it's still brown. Probably because it's the same water or it's connected somehow. But in the end it's everywhere. The same brown water, so I dubbed it. It's already brown for like as long as I can remember, so at least 25 years. 
So I'm not sure what it is, but if it's rust, it should be done by now, right? So I've arrived at the shopping mall. It's a small one. This is a pharmacy kind of thing. As you can see there, there's a supermarket. Now it's Albert Heijn. Back then it was pre-marked. Not the Primark as we have it now with clothes and stuff, but it was a supermarket back then. Let me see. Uh, next to the Albert Heijn there's a baker. That one was already there. I think it's still the same one, not quite sure. Next to that there's a bookshop or anything. Um, well, that's the place I got my Power Ranger. My Power Ranger uh, book and, and stickers and stuff. And next to that there's now a, a, a hairdresser. I'm not sure what that was. Next to that, in the corner. Um, there's now a cafeteria, which was by, back then a, um, a butcher, where I could get the best meat I can remember. So That side is not really familiar with me, only there was a cafeteria. Not sure what it is now, probably also a cafeteria or something, I don't know. But yeah, that is this shopping center. And it was a bigger shopping center. Uh, it was like a 20 minute walk from home back then. So I think it's now uh, like 10 minutes away from here. So yeah, let's walk there and I will check you up there again. Well, behind me is the other shopping center. It's called Hexen Wheel. If I freely translate it, it's Witching Wheel or Witch's Wheel. Um, as you can see now already, there are a lot of stores that are empty, like deserted. That's not good, I guess. But still, there are some shops that are still open. I don't know if it's open now, but somewhat a nice fountain here. A lot of leaves in it because, well, winter, autumn, you know. Looks like a pretty good place to shoot sometimes. In summer or anything. As you can see over there there's a library. I think I'm I was inside there once or twice maybe. Not sure why because I didn't read a lot of books, still don't so. So yeah, that's whole stuff is empty. I think there are there were banks and stuff, so not quite sure what this is now or what it's supposed to be what it's supposed to become, but for now it's empty. Well, this is pretty much how I can remember everything. Just some clothing shops and cheese, bakery. It's okay, need to get my other phone because the camera died on the other one. What I wanted to say, uh, there's Primera right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Before that, there was a store where they sell um, CDs and DVDs and stuff. I can I can remember in 1995 I bought there my first CD. It was a, a a CD collection of all Dutch songs. Don't know why I bought it because I hate Dutch songs, but for then it was I liked it quite much. In the same square uh, right there, there was a truck. A um, couple of years later, since I've left here, uh, it was a truck of Bossy and Adrian. It's a clown and an acrobat, uh, they made also a lot of uh, Dutch adventures and stuff for children, it's amazing, I'm a fan of them, still I'm a huge fan of them, uh, too bad they retired, but sometimes they, they do little things to entertain the fans and I still love them, they're the best. So yeah, for the rest it's all the same here, I uh, don't know if you saw it in the other video, but I will say it again, there's a snake bar there which was already there. There's the a supermarket called MT right now. Before that, it was Ada. My mom worked there, not in the time we lived here, but in the time we went back from Driebergen to uh, Etteleur. Uh, Driebergen and Etteleur, both I will show you sometime in the, in, the, in the future, in the near future, in the next coming weeks. So yeah, that's kind of it. The rest is pretty much the same. So I hope you liked the tour here through Beda, to, the, to my past a tour in my past. Uh, it's part one obviously because after this we will getting to Etteleur. But for now I'm finishing it up. Um, again I hope you liked it. I hope I could show you something of my past. I hope it was clear. Um, can't wait to show you Etteleur, the place I live right now. 
and where I lived in the past as well. So let's go there next. Not now, but another time. So for now I'm just going back home, I guess, and later on today dancing. For now I stop vlogging for today, because I already have enough for today, more than enough to show you guys. I don't think anything special will happen. If that's the case, I will show you, obviously, but... Okay, for now I will say, I know it's a bit early, but see you tomorrow. Goodbye.